Well, good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Wake, welcome to Long Tom SA, and we'll have a look today at the cold steel from Dotmont. And you see, there's also ambitious vapor over there. But according to himself, um, he had very, very little to do with it. And with the first batch, there also was some. Well, I'll come to that in a minute. Just give myself a point out. Here we go. There's the ambitions vapor thing. Start mod. Um, this side we have the barcode and cold steel dot mod. On this side, a couple of warnings right over here. And on this side, model cold steel 100. Also, the website I bought it to have it as a cold steel 120. I don't know what is it with that. Um, different size, different names. So that's what it is. Let's see what it looks like. Right, it comes in this lovely baggie. It comes with some paperwork right over here. It comes, for example, with this instructions manual, which I actually used. And I'll tell you in a minute why I was forced to use it. I mean, I had to put my entire manliness aside and use an instruction manual. We'll come to that in a minute. You have these uh, quality control cards, which doesn't mean anything. And then you have battery safety cards, not only one, but two. You can never have enough battery safety. And then EH Pro's purchase information and the warranty terms. That's on that card. To be quite honest, I'm not even sure EH Pro is still around. I haven't seen new stuff from EH Pro in ages. Anyway, so it comes with this baggie. And look at this. I have never used this baggie. Never, ever. And it already seems to come apart here. Has this uh, thing here on. But to be quite honest, this baggie is not very useful anyway. And if you, if you have your mod in here in the baggie, so that's very nice. You can put it on your belt. But what if you put... A mod on there. Now you have what now? Do it like that. Nah. Yeah, I don't think that would. Maybe a hole in here, or yeah, I could have done something to make this baggy useful. So it might be useful for something, but it's certainly not for this mod. That's for sure. But let's take the Etty off again. And here we are, uh, zoom in, here we go. So there is the Coastal EH Pro. Let's have a look from the top. We have a spring mounted 510 out right over here, which needs some cleaning. Yeah, we actually run this mod through its paces for quite some time. Do that every now and again, just go in there and, and clean your, your 510. Here we go. Then you have on here, you see that they have written on here as a bit of market. It says manufactured by EH Pro and the serial number 48966. So they sell quite a few of this. Now in the older models, if you look here, you had Ambitions Vapor written on here as well. And it looked horrific, especially on the black one. Especially given the fact that Ambitions Vapor didn't have anything to do with it. Not at all. By his own admission, it's not that I want to, you know, by his own admission, he didn't have anything to do with the design of this mod. So they, it looks like in the later batches, they've taken that off and I'm very glad about that. Then let's uh, take a look around. We have the fire button. We have the up and down rocker switch. We have the micro USB port. We're not going to be uh, ugly about that. This mod has been around for a while. Then if you look around here, we have some very subtle uh, branding right over here. It's just, just cold steel, but it's not a different color, so it's not obnoxious. No problem with that. And apart from that, it's absolutely branding free. I love that. And even there is no branding at the bottom, just the normal CE sign and the don't vape in a bin. That's it. And uh, it's obviously a single um, 21, 700, 2700, 18650 with the adapter. 
So obviously we're going to pop in 21700. And if you look at the marking right over here, it says plus right over here. And it says quite clearly minus right over here. So there is no chance you get confused here. This is how you have to put it in. Put the plus side in. I actually have rewrapped this battery. It's quite a thick wrap and it went in quite smoothly. Right, put it in. You saw the green light here flashing for a second when it made contact. And we switch it on by clicking it five times. It says cold steel and then you have your screen. Now there's one thing I would like to talk about before I get to the menu, kind of finish up with the menu. And this is this design feature here. You see they have made a conical design. Well, they have that made that on the bottom with the battery door, which has a little bit of knurling on here. But they also seem to have to, you know, try to mirror that on top. I don't think that's a clever idea. I'll tell you why that is. If I take a 28 millimeter atomizer here, Juggalon version 2, for example, and you look at that now, you will see it would have fit perfectly on here if this wouldn't have been angled in. If this would have been kept straight, 28 millimeter atomizer would have had no overhang and it probably would have looked quite nice on here. But they haven't. They actually have brought it down to, let's put the intake dual here, 26 millimeter, 26 millimeter, you know, just half a millimeter of overhang. So 25, comfortably 26, if you don't look too close, will fit on here. So yeah, I, I, I'm not a very clever decision, especially with a mod which is as high powered for a single battery mod. I certainly could have, you know, gone with the original diameter of the barrel and kept it at 28 millimeters. Now this, what you see here is the menu. Shall we go zoom in a little bit? Why not? Here we go. Right. That's the menu. We are now in wattage mode. And I tell you what, for a little mode, as far as the chip is concerned, it comes with all the bells and whistles. We go, there's a wattage. It goes up to 120. I never wept that high, so I don't care. And it round robins. And it round robins up and down. Right, so that is that. Then you see, now let's, let me just show you what you can see. You see here, it says NO, that stands for normal because we are in wattage mode. That's your battery indicator. There's your uh, resistance. There's your voltage. There's your wattage. There's no puff counter or puff in seconds, uh, no amperage. Screen is just too small. You couldn't fit it all in here, could you? There's a menu for this. You go one, two, three, and here we go. You have a menu, you go into either power, and if you click onto power, you can choose between normal, soft, strong, or back. We stay in normal. Then you have temperature control. We have nickel, we have stainless steel, we have titanium, we have TCR, which is curves and that kind of stuff. And we can go back. Then you have the curves. Then you can go to bypass. Then you can uh, vape in voltage. That's something you would like to do. And then we go to back. Now I fiddled around with this a little bit and I thought, all right, that's all good and well. Um, uh, what if I want to lock the keys? Well, normally if you lock, want to lock the keys, you press the up and down button at the same time. Let's do this. And it says mod locked. Now, here we go. Maybe the zoom will go in a little bit better. I don't know, really, really. Uh, what happens if I switch off that light? Now that becomes too bright at all. Here we go. So it says mod locked, which means you can also not fire it, it stays at mod locked. Now that's that's kind of interesting, but I would actually like most of the times I would like just to lock these keys. I thought, well, that's stupid. Why do they do that? So you obviously can unlock it by pressing them both. 
So if you want to put it in your pocket, that's how you can lock your mod if you don't want to switch it on and off. And I understand sometimes you just don't want to switch it on and off all the time. Um, but uh, it should come with keys locked. It's stupid that it doesn't do that. And then I, yesterday, actually, I thought, let me look in the menu. Maybe it can. You know what? It can. Press the up button and the fire button at the same time. And it says key locked. So now you can still fire it, but your keys are locked. Press the buttons again, and it says key unlock. Then uh, press the minus button and the fire button, and it switches around. So if you're left handed, if you're more around like this, you can have it like this. Well, I'm not, so I'll switch it back around again. Here we go. So that's very nice. And then the other thing you can do, if you press all three buttons, you're in stealth mode. Okay, now it says check atomizer, but if you put an atomizer on there, it will fire it in stealth mode. So uh, if you get a, a vape in at night in bed next to your wife, ideal. Press all three again, and the display comes back on again. And that's the functionality. <coughs> I apologize. That's the functionality of the chip, which we have in the cold steel from EH Pro. For me, very nice. I, I like it a lot. The reason I bought this, maybe just as a background story, is I heard that it is good. You know, there were a couple of reviewers who actually thought this was a pretty good mod at the time. And uh, I had the Cube X, uh, which I normally used for my Anani, but uh, that was stolen away from me by my wife, who suddenly liked it very much. So I thought, well, I get myself another Anani. I was lucky enough still to get one, which is also matte black. And then you have something like this. Uh, let's go to the other direction. Here we go. Now look at that. Doesn't that look sick? I mean, that fits perfectly matchy-matchy. I have the black um, tip here on top. Just uh, need to find one which really fits on here. That's one of the Anani drawbacks that this chimney up here where your 510 goes on is a bit thin. Could be just a tad thicker. But anyway, I will find myself a drip tip for that. And uh, it fits perfectly. I like it a lot, so that's how I use it. Go down to scrolls very fast if you want to go there. Here we go. Let's go to 12 watt. There's I have 1.4 ohm resistance because it's the Anani. It's a very tight mouth to lung. And it works perfectly. I like it. It's a heavy mod. It really is heavy in the hand. You feel you have something in the hand. It feels very sturdy. It's made out of metal. It has no obnoxious branding on it. Beautiful battery door, which actually works very well. And the reason I say beautiful, because you don't need to fiddle in here like with these battery doors. You sometimes have to do those who go into the chassis. You know, you have to fiddle them with you. I hate those. Uh, it also doesn't have one of these flip open little handles which you need to fit. You just can do this. So that's perfect. That's fine for me. Thank you very much. So it's a, it, it looks a simple mod. It doesn't look complicated. It doesn't look fancy, but it, it has a very nice chip in there with a lot of functionality which you can do anything with it, which you could. And uh, the only thing I have about it, which I which I think they might have uh, missed the trick here, is this uh, beauty ring over here, which they put on, and they could have just, you know, not let that go up straight, and it would have accommodated a twenty eight millimeter, um, actually quite comfortable. So that would have been very nice. Rocking this with a Juggernaut version two in black would have looked awesome and it can run the Juggernaut very easily because the wattage it puts out with the 21700 is more than high enough. All right, and that's all I have to say about the uh, cold steel from EH Pro. 
if you still get them. Well, I actually got mine a week or two ago, so they are still around. In South Africa, they certainly are, and they might be around somewhere else as well. I can only recommend it. Beautiful Etty, very sturdy, uh, very little branding, so it's not ugly and good functionality. It has a smaller screen, so if your eyesight is dodgy, then you might not want to have that. But for me, I'm fine. I can see everything on it and it works like a bomb. One one criticism. Let me let me show you one thing. The fire button. I think it is a bit dainty. I like the rocker switch, that's fine. But if they would have moved that screen a little bit further down and made the fire button five millimeter longer, I think it would have been more comfortable to fire. You know, the other the fire button is a bit dainty for me. But hey, that's that's a nitpick. It has nothing to do with the functionality of the mod, it's just a personal thing. I would have left the fire button where my thumb goes in more comfortably. But otherwise, beautiful mod, works very well, very good functionality. And, and I really think uh, if you're in for a single battery mod, which uh, can cover up to 100 watt comfortably, this is the one for you. Thanks very much for popping in and I wish you all the best. Greetings from Cape Town and goodbye.